Is Imam Mahdi about to appear soon? Are we going to live to see the time of the Dajjal? Are we living the end of times? These are frequent questions I'm being asked at this moment, especially with the current situation going on in the world. To understand all of this, you have to first understand that the Prophet ﷺ gave us minor signs and he gave us major signs. Okay. Now major signs, there are 10 of them, starting with Dajjal and then Isa alayhi salam and then Yajjum and so on. These are 10 major signs. None of the major signs can appear until all the minor signs have appeared. And where is Imam Mahdi in all of this? Imam Mahdi is the bridge between the minor signs and the major signs, meaning that he will be the last of the minor signs and he will live to see the coming of the Jal, live to see the coming of the first of the major signs. Okay. So now of the minor signs, if they don't all appear, then we won't see Imam Mahdi, we won't see the Jal. Okay, remember that. And from the from the minor signs, the scholars have said that most of them have appeared, except for a few, that a handful of them that haven't appeared. Of them is a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim where the Prophet ﷺ speaks about the river Euphrates, which runs from Turkey, goes through Syria, all the way through Iraq. That river will recede and it will lead behind it like a mountain full of gold. Prophet ﷺ has warned us not to go there. He said for every hundred men that go there, every man thinking that I'm going to be the one taking the gold, he said 99 of them will die and only one of them will come back alive. Okay, that's a minor sign. Of the day of before the day of judgment, which we haven't seen yet until that doesn't come, Imam Mahdi is not coming, and you know, the job's not coming, you know, thereafter. The another sign of the minor signs which hasn't yet appeared is that the Prophet ﷺ speaks about the Jaziratul Arab in Sahih Hadith of Muslim that the Arabian Peninsula will return back to becoming green and have rivers flowing in it. We haven't seen that yet come, and there are a few others that haven't come. Of the signs that haven't come is. The, the lot of battles that the Prophet ﷺ speaks about before and a lot of wars that happened before the coming of Imam Mahdi. Okay, so one of them is about, uh, and, and it's a long hadith about the Ahlul Rum. Who are the Ahlul Rum? The Prophet ﷺ, when he says that word or that phrase, he's referring to the current day Europeans. In his time, they were the Roman Empire. In today's time, it's the Europeans and the people who traveled from Europe going to America because that's how America was founded and anywhere else from Europe that they went. These are the Ahlul Rum. Now, the Ahlul Rum will divide into two. There will be some, there will be part of them that will be the enemies of Muslims and part of them will be sympathetic towards the Muslims. Those who are sympathetic towards the Muslims will join the Muslims together in a war and fight the others who are the, you know, who are the enemies of the, of the Muslims. And these battles carry on, carry on. Some they will lose, some they will win and so on until one day. The, the, the Ahlul Rum that are sympathetic towards the Muslims, with the Muslims, they win over the others. Okay. They live in peace for a little while. And after that, one day they fall into dispute. The Muslims say that we won this last major war because of the Quran. And the Ahlul Rum say, no, we, we won it because of the cross. And they have a fight between them now. And in this fight, the Muslims are defeated. And the hadith mentions that the ja, that, that, sorry, that, that Imam Mahdi is coming after this okay so imam mahdi comes at the end of sort of this war okay that's one hadith there's another hadith in abu dawud a sahih hadith which speaks about the succession of khalifas now khalifa is a person who rules the entire muslim world and we had this for centuries and centuries from the time of abu Bakr radiallahu anhu till about a hundred years ago that whole succession it comes in again and there are many successive successive sort of rulers one last ruler has passed away. A new ruler is supposed to be elected. They are in Sham at the moment. Rasulullah speaks about Sham in various ahadith. When he says Sham, he doesn't mean today Syria only. It covers Syria, whole of Syria. It covers Lebanon. It covers the whole of Palestine. It covers part of Egypt. It covers part of Iraq. Okay, it's a massive part of land. In Sham, these leaders are sitting together and they're about to elect the next leader. Each one is is ready, you know, could, could become a potential leader. And they have a dispute over, over who should be the leader. One of these men who could become the leader, he has enough of this. He runs away from there. He goes to Mecca. He doesn't want to become the leader. The others look around. They say, where's that man gone? And they say, well, he's gone to Mecca. So they say, you know what? Let's make him the leader. They come all the way to Mecca. They find this man that is he's doing tawaf around the Kaaba. And they force him to become the leader of the Muslims, just like... The Muslims forced Abu Bakr in the past to become a leader of the Muslims. Now, this man is the Mahdi. Now, how do you know he's the Mahdi? Not because of this occurrence, but because of another occurrence that happens at that very moment, which is they left behind them. When they came down from Sham, they left behind them an army. That army becomes rebellious. And they say, well, what? They're making this guy the, the, the leader of the Muslims? No, no, we're not taking any of this, right? So they come with a whole army trying to crush these people. When they get to... Uh, Medina in, in a plain piece of land, then the whole land opens beneath their feet and that whole army is crushed and it's swallowed inside. 
when that occurrence happens, we know the man that they gave allegiance to in front of the Kaaba, he is the Mahdi. Now, when Imam Mahdi comes out, he's now going to unite the Muslims together. So his first job is to get the Muslims together. Okay, So he's now the Khalifa of Muslims. He gets the Muslims together. He comes to Europe for a major, major war. This is a major war where the Muslims, subhanAllah, Rasulullah speaks about a third of the Muslims, they, they are you know, shuhada, the best shuhada of the day. They're martyrs, in, martyred in that war. A third of them run away from that war, never to be forgiven again. And a third of them are victorious with Imam Mahdi. And now Imam Mahdi has the whole of Europe and the European side and the security uh, and the security of uh, a good, you know, a, a, a good ruling. And he fills the earth with justice as much as injustice was there before him. He, he replaces it with justice. In a hadith, he travels all the way to India, he travels all the way to Persia to bring the Muslims together. Now he's got his rule there. Now, the key thing here is when Imam Mahdi has brought, okay, and, and don't forget, there are a number of wars that have to happen before Imam Mahdi comes. So what's, what's happening in the world is just, you know, just like, a, a war, but it's not, you know, the war that brings Imam Mahdi about. There are a number of other wars that have to come back, and all the occurrences that I've just talked about now as well. Imam Mahdi, when it comes to power, the hadith, a hadith mentioned that he's going to frequently go up and down from Jerusalem and back up north again, back to, to European side again. Now, the scholars have said, if that is the case, subhanAllah, it means that Jerusalem will not be under anyone's occupation at that time except for the Muslims, except for Imam Mahdi. That's one set of scholars. Another set of scholars have said that Dajjal will have his base around the sort of Jerusalem area. Now, there's a, there, there's a whole dispute between the scholars, which is that, you know, what's going to be, you know, whose who's occupation is Jerusalem going to, going to be in at the time when Imam Mahdi appears and when, when Dajjal comes about? Now, we are going to incline more towards the fact that subhanAllah, Imam Mahdi has got, you know, Jerusalem under his control. Okay, the, it, from from the ahadith, it, it's quite quite clear because he's going in and out of it. And the ahadith mention, okay, in one hadith he mentioned the jal can't go to Makkah and Medina, which is you know, when you say Makkah and Medina, the Prophet is talking about the Haram of Makkah and the Haram of Medina, which is the masjid and its vicinity. It's outside sort of you know vicinity. Uh, that's in Makkah and Medina. Another hadith in Ahmad mentions four places the jal can't go into, and it's Makkah, Medina, and Masjid Al Aqsa and Masjid Al Tur. Okay, now when he says Masjid al Aqsa, subhanAllah, the Prophet has been saying he can't go to Masjid al Aqsa. Does that mean that the whole of the Aqsa surroundings are under the occupation of the people who are trying to take over it right now? And uh, the Dajjal can't only go into Masjid al Aqsa? Or does it mean that the whole of the Aqsa vicinity is under the Muslim rule? Again, it's a, it's a, you know, debate, debate amongst the Muslim scholars. We furthermore have another hadith, uh, that describes that the first great following, the first following, major following of, of the Jal is going to be from the east. It's going to be from a place of Asfahan in Iran. And there's going to be 70,000 Jewish uh, people who will, who will follow him. These are, these are going to be the first major followers of the Jal. Now, again, the question is, why from that part of the world? Why are they the major? Is it because, you know, he's got his major, you know, base somewhere in the east and, and then he comes to fight the Muslims uh, over here in the Middle East and so on? Who knows? We can't be for sure. But certainly we've got hope that whatever is happening right now in the world, it doesn't have to be that that they take over, take over this entire place. They might be there for some time. We don't know how long. Okay, but we definitely know that there's going to be, you know, something that, that is going to come back now. Where, where are you going to find all of that? I'm going to ask all of you to read the tafsir of the beginning of Surah Isra. Okay, if you want to know the future of this place of Jerusalem and what's, what's going to happen, well, you look in the Quran because that's what the Quran came to us for. It came to us to tell us about, you know, ab about things that are the most important things to us. Why did Allah Azza wa Jal dedicate the first, you know, part of Surah Isra talking about, you know, this place, Masjid Al-Aqsa and what's going to happen and what happened in the past and what Allah said each time there is, an, there is a great occupation that happens there. What will be the outcome of that? Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned that in, in Surah Isra in the beginning. Go and read the tafsir yourself and find out because there it mentions, whatever is mentioned there of the history is about to repeat itself in the future. Okay, that, that in, eventually there's going to be no occupation there because Allah will send his men in there. Where his men in there, and they will, they, it says that the uh, Khaluhu, uh, they will enter the, the masjid, you know, as they entered beforehand. Does that mean again that the whole thing is occupied by the people who are t trying to take over right now? It could be, yes, it could be very much so that they actually take over the entire place. It could also be that all this happens and, you know, when gone, 
you know, later on, Imam Mahdi comes, he takes, you know, he's already in control over that and Dajjal doesn't have his base there. It could be either way. Anyway, food for thought.